And thank you. Police detectives work around the clock to help solve crimes. It's no different for the El Centro Police Department, working tirelessly to bring families closure after one of the most difficult times in their lives. News 11's Wally Jahari shows us what it takes to be a detective in this special report you'll only see on News 11. That's right. We got to go on a ride along with Detective Alfredo Hernandez, who told us that his career isn't just a job, but it's a lifestyle. He also mentioned that sometimes he gets interrupted in his sleep by a tip text, but he says it's all worth it if it helps them solve a big case. Following up on felony crimes, conducting extensive investigations, and calls for service, all in a day's work for our local detectives. We know that uh, making the apprehensions and arrests in, in these cases, especially the, the murder cases, they don't bring the people's loved ones back. We know that. Um, it's, uh, it's a really sad situation throughout, but at least it brings closure to these families. Detective Alfredo Hernandez has been solving crimes for seven years now. And during that time, he's worked on hundreds of cases. He says one of the most important parts of a criminal investigation is when a weapon is recovered, like in the case of a motel shooting in El Centro last June, where 27-year-old Pablo Dominguez was killed. Well, we also recovered the bullet from the victim at a later time during, during the, uh, the autopsy. You could get DNA evidence off that weapon. You could get fingerprints off that weapon. You could trace the origins of that weapon, where it came from. Hernandez says social media played its part in recovering additional suspects because the same weapon recovered matched with pictures he discovered online. And we found photographs of that weapon in the possession of some of the suspects that we were looking at. So. That was huge. Detectives also have to build relationships with their community. And there's no trust between the police department and the community. It's hard for people to, to come forward and to give the, like witness testimony and statements to things that they have seen. El Centro detectives also take pride in dismantling a gang in 2013, accused of committing crimes with no motives. These guys were committing stabbings, shootings, murders. After our ride with Detective Alfredo, he showed us some of his tools. We're pretty much ready to go. I could show you the kind of equipment that we have here in the unit. Yeah, let's, let's take you a look at take that. A look? Yeah. Evidence markers there. I have flashlights. I have different sizes of bags for for different articles of, of evidence. For example, there's these small bags here, knives, guns, and even long guns. This is called the side saddle, like double out of buck. This is lethal force here. Okay. And then these blue, you notice that there's like a, like a ball bearing. That's basically a large bullet. Detective Alfredo says the interview process is also challenging and can be a real game changer. It's uh, audio and video recorded. There's even uh, an area there where we can handcuff a suspect if we think that they could potentially be violent. Uh, we usually have somebody uh, close by in the event something does happen. Um, but when it comes to interviewing witnesses, even kids, uh, or victims of, of some crimes, we, we sometimes don't do it in this room because it can be intimidating for them. So we'll just break, we'll just seat them here. On this whiteboard, a sketch of a murder scene. Uh, a witness to a murder where her son was killed a few years back. And she was basically telling me kind of like the layout of her house and where the suspects were standing at the time her son was killed. Detective Alfredo says although the job is self-sufficient, they're held accountable by the public and the district attorney. Taking shortcuts or anything like that because you're creating an injustice for the victims and the, the, 
the people involved in the cases, but you'll get called out on it as well from, you know, the staff here and the district attorney's office when, when they refuse to prosecute a defendant because you haven't really put in the effort into the case that's required. Detectives say sometimes they can't sleep at night if a case remains unsolved and that it can be difficult when witnesses don't speak up. That we don't always get the cooperation, some of our violent crimes, uh, just because of the nature of it themselves. We don't, whether it be people tend to fear retaliation, stuff that they see on TV, they think if they uh, communicate with us, they'll, they'll be retaliated on. Uh, so that's one of the biggest challenges that we have is violent crimes have been increasing uh, in our community and we are trying to work our hardest to get them resolved. However, uh, the challenge we have is uh, not everyone always wants to speak up and cooperate during those types of investigations. Detective Adrian Chilpa says that at the end of the day, solving a case is what makes it all worth it. Having that feeling that somebody uh, actually acknowledge the work that went behind what you did. Detectives say that bringing justice to a victim's family is something that helps them sleep at night. It also inspires them to continue navigating through some of their toughest cases. Detectives discuss in detail on one of their most challenging investigations in a web extra on KYMA.com. For that, you can click on this QR code and it'll take you right to it. I'm Wiley Jahari reporting from El Centro. Back to you. Wiley, thank you for that report. New tonight, Arizona Representative Charlene Fernandez just announced her resignation from the Arizona House of Representatives. Fernandez, who represents Yuma County, says she has taken a position at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. She adds it has been the honor of a lifetime to serve the constituents of District 4, where she has advocated for border communities. Her resignation is effective November 15th. We have an interview set with her for tomorrow. Kid-sized COVID vaccines are on their way to Yuma County now that the CDC has given the thumbs up for ages 5 to 11. The Yuma County Public Health Services District says doses will be available next Monday, November 8th. Vaccine clinics will be held Monday through Thursday from 8.30 to 11.30 and 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. throughout this month. You must schedule an appointment ahead of time. We have that link for you on KYMA.com. The Biden administration has an official deadline for workers who fall under its new vaccination mandate. Today, the White House announcing certain health care workers, federal contractors and employees at larger businesses must comply with its new vaccine rules by January 4th. That means roughly 84 million employees and 17 million health care workers have two months to become fully vaccinated. Officials say the federal mandate preempts any state or local laws. OSHA and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services will implement the rules. Violations could include fines of up to nearly $14,000 for each infraction, with an increased fine if the violation is found to be, quote, willful. The U.S. reached another grim milestone today, surpassing 750,000 deaths from COVID. And over 46 million have been diagnosed with the virus. The U.S. has the most cases and deaths of any nation globally. It comes as President Biden is also calling on eligible Americans to get their booster shot. 58% of the total U.S. population is fully vaccinated. Britain became the first country in the world today to approve a potentially game-changing COVID-19 antiviral pill jointly developed by Merck and Ridgeback Biotherapeutics and a boost to the fight against the pandemic. The UK regulatory agency recommended the drug called Molnilpervir as has been used as a possible way of uh, following a positive COVID-19 test rather, excuse me, and within five days of the onset of symptoms. This is the first oral antiviral treatment for COVID-19 to get approved with a green light coming ahead of potential US regulatory clearance. US advisors will meet this month to vote on whether it should be authorized. And since schools in Yuma have gone back to in-person learning, masks have been an option, but not a requirement. However, now schools can lawfully enforce a mask mandate if they want to. That's because recently the Arizona Supreme Court upheld a ruling which found that the Arizona legislator unconstitutionally included the mandate ban in the state budget. Following the Supreme Court's rulings, local districts like Crane and Yuma Union High School say they won't make it mandatory, at least for now, but they will continue to give students and staff the option. Some parents are good with that choice for the time being. 
I appreciate Yuma being unique and uh, us being a community, and I'm glad that most of the districts today agree that it's up to the parents and how it should be. So I, I feel good being in Yuma, and I think we'll be protected. The ban on mandates came back in August after Arizona Governor Doug Ducey threatened to cut funding from schools who required masks. All right, let's turn things over to Rob. Ra Rob, when are we finally going to see some 70s? We've well, been waiting. Yeah, I know. It's, it's been a long time coming. I mean, we're anticipating, we're chomping at the bit. Here we are just weeks away from Thanksgiving, and, you know, Don't we want to be thankful for some 70s here, so <laughs> let, let's get the act going. But, uh, yeah, we're expecting cooler temperatures down the road, and that's the key phrase. We'll get into that in a little bit. But your RV World Yuma Sky Cam giving you a glimpse of the bright lights of the city of Yuma, and here's what's going on.